Checking In with Anthony and Glenn is brought to you by HD Supply. It's Checking In with Anthony and Glenn. Teaching you to be the hotelier that you want to be. It's Checking In with Anthony and Glenn. Hey, Anthony. Sup? How you doing? I'm doing good. How you doing? Good. I'm trying to, you know, capture my inner street now that I've been working with this Brooklyn guy for so long. I'm just trying to be a little bit more like what you's up to. So, you know, <laughs> the Brooklyn guy and his friend, Glenn, we're, yeah. uh, where are we? We're at the Garden City we're Hotel. Garden City Hotel. Thank which you, is Garden our home. City Hotel. Yep. Which is our home now for the podcast. And, you know, you're at the Garden City Hotel, really in the middle of a neighborhood, and you have one of the best chefs on earth, David Burke, that has a restaurant right in the middle of a hotel called the Red Salt Room. And yes, we will there. be having him on the show soon. It's just amazing. You can have your birthday party, anniversary, private dining, anything you want, and you have your own David Burke restaurant at the Garden City Hotel. So very fortunate to be here, and I cannot wait to try his food because I have not been to the restaurant yet, but I will uh, soon. What about the last time we were here? We had room service. They had insisted we have some. I Boy, disagree, and you are right, and it was amazing. Yep, uh, it really was, especially the uh, the bacon on a clothesline, which was uh, a lot of a lot of fun. The way that they present this actually comes hanging on a uh, on a clothesline. Good thick cut bacon, absolutely delicious. I feel like we should just talk about uh, food all day instead of our big topic of the day. What is our topic? Our big uh, topic today is I find. One of the things that are most interesting about our incredible society that we have in America is the way that we love to build, build, build up people until they're the most recognized person in the country, the most famous person in the world, and then tear them down and, you know, make sure that they're not at the top of the food chain anymore. Well, I agree and disagree with that. Mm -hmm. I don't think we build people up to tear them down. I think it's a natural result. I think when people build themselves up, and we appreciate their work, whether it be through social media, whatever it is. We, they build themselves up, and we approve or disapprove mm-hmm, of their work, mm-hmm. whether it be whoever, any celebrity on TV, whatever it is. And then we approve their work. What is fascinating, okay, is when we see, oh, wow, they bleed and laugh and cry mm-hmm. and go to the bathroom just like we do. And they're human. Ah, and they made a mistake. So somehow in our self-conscious, we're like, Oh, that could be us. Mm-hmm. Oh, it happened to him. Yeah. So I ain't that bad. You know, because c- it could happen to him, it could happen to me. But it's not me. It's him. Right. So let me take all of what's going on in my feelings about me and let me push them on him. He sucks. Agreed. No one caught me yet. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I still, you know, I'm, I'm still a good person. So I think it's, I don't really think people do it on purpose. And I really don't think it's, I think it's just human behavior where... Right. We are almost fascinated that these people that have been so successful have destroyed their lives or something happened to make them look normal and human, so we just jump on. I think uh, I, I will have to disagree, and I love being able to disagree with you. This is a, this is a lot of fun because I see that um, we love celebrity in our society almost more than anything yes, in our society 100%. we value it 100%. so much as soon as i got on tv so, i became 10 times more than anybody which is i don't understand right. why because i'm still the guy that was before tv right which is which is a crazy thing now right. I, I know you and know you've become 10 times smarter but other people wouldn't uh, really uh, recognize that so um i've you know i've stopped trying to make jokes i'm just trying to suck up to him now to get some sort of po- positive approval out of this guy but uh, i think really honestly um anthony we build up celebrities so much and we love to do that because playing on what you said we want to envision ourselves oh if they could do it, we could do it. But then we build them up to such a point that um, the news media and the entertainment um, you know, media needs to leverage that person in a way to, to sell advertising, et cetera, et cetera. So they need to find ways to kind of pull that person down. But I don't agree with that. I also find that once people are pulled down, then we have the, the cycle of trying to build them up again for a great comeback story. Give me an example where someone that was on top got – Taken down by the public. A to- uh, that wasn't uh, at their own doing. Uh, that wasn't. I'm not saying it's their, not their own doing. A lot of well, people. Well, there you go. Uh, but I think that the way that we treat people 
um, is is interesting in the sense that oh, yeah. if they weren't in the celebrity the celebrity sphere, we wouldn't have such strong reactions right. to them. We probably wouldn't think about it. So they may make a mistake that any average uh, Joe or Jane would make, but then everybody pounces on that person and treats it like it's the worst thing. Yeah, but thing. we pounced on them by buying their products and watching their movies. That's right. So when they do bad, we like we pounce on them, if you can call it pouncing. So mm-hmm. do, do I think the media, you know, tries to destroy people on purpose. I think in a political form, yes. I don't think anybody really went out of their way to try to destroy Bill Cosby. I think Bill Cosby destroyed himself. No, I don't think that they go out to do it on purpose as much as destroying a person and continuing to have negative stories about person uh, about a person drives clicks on websites, drives views on TV shows and those sorts of things. So the real demon is that need to find uh, the you know success through bringing somebody down as opposed to bringing somebody down from only the actions that they've done, if that was clear enough for you. I think it was. And okay. thank you for talking down to me. I yeah. got it. Um, <laughs> listen. I, that was more of a, I wasn't sure if I was commuting clearly. Uh, listen, I, I think uh, what fascinates me is why do people think people on TV or people in social media or wherever are special? Mm-hmm. Like, why are people special? Why, like, if I see a celebrity walking down the street, like a Will Smith or whatever, I'm like, holy shit, it's Will Smith. Is that really Will Smith? Mm -hmm. And it's almost like he's fake. And I I get caught up sometimes, too. Like, what happens? And, you know, somebody once said to me, you know, a TV star and a movie star is so much different. Right. A TV star, you know, you see a TV star, you're like, hey, that's cool. You know, Mm -hmm. you see the guy on TV, it's kind of cool. Because when you're watching TV, what are you doing? You're basically sitting at the same level of the television. So you're looking the person almost in the eye. So it almost feels like a contemporary, almost feels like, hey, they're special, but it's not as big as a movie star. Right. Why is a movie star almost untouchable and almost so like out of touch? Like how, oh my God, it's Will Smith or who John well, how about- or whatever. And I'll, tell, I'll tell you what somebody told me. It's because you're sitting below a huge screen. And they are ten times the size of you in a dark room, and they're almost, you know, they're 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 overruling all your senses. So that person's so much bigger. So I think that that's what happens when you say build people up. We build them up because it's like, oh my God, they've been talking to me all these years. Oh my God, they're so special. They're so extraordinary. And when they're when and when they do something wrong, and you start taking them down, I don't think you're taking them down. You're just realizing, oh. They suck, just like right. You know, a lot of things suck. Yeah. All right. Let's take um. Let's take a look for an example. You're uh, not buying anything I say. No, I and am. We're, we're, and what I'm saying, you don't think makes sense. I, I want to put it this way because I, I think that we're kind of circling around the same idea, but we're kind of looking at it a little bit differently. I think about um. I think about Ben Affleck, for example. What a huge star he was mm-hmm. at one. So time. who took him down? I think the media took bullshit. him down. Absolute bullshit. I think the media took him down because um, I call was him juicy bullshit. stories with the, uh, his relationship with J-Lo. Then he had that bad Kevin Smith movie, Gili, that came out. And it turned into a giant let's pile on kind of a thing with him. And he had to go away for a little while before rediscovering himself and coming back. Uh, John Travolta has had horrible movies. John Travolta has horrible movies and potentially hey, I love Battlefield Earth. Don't you make fun of that. <laughs> okay, he's had some <laughs> amazing right, movie iconic ever. movies. Mm-hmm. Okay? He's had some horrible movies. And he, he, a lot of people are against the Church of Scientology. Some people support the, right. he's part of that. But people I don't see him getting taken down because he's not out there doing drugs. He's not out there doing bad things. He's just living his life and from time to time he makes bad movies. But he's gonna be allowed to come back anytime he makes a good movie that people like, right? Mm-hmm. Like he just made the Gotti movie and I, I actually have a relationship with the guy who who wrote the movie so that's a very sensitive subject for me because mm-hmm. I thought it was a pretty good movie but he didn't get destroyed. Everybody else got destroyed but right. he did it and the movie itself got panned but they're like, he's still a good actor and it was just, it just wasn't the right vehicle for him, whatever. So the media is not looking to rip him apart. Now, he also had allegations against him and they haven't ripped him apart because I don't think he fed into, okay, the media frenzy. That's I think a great people, point. I, I think people like a Ben Affleck. Like if you know you're having problems, okay, and you're going to whatever problem you have, don't be caught out there at a poker table at Vegas 
to give the media a chance to pounce on you. Go to a private poker room where nobody knows you're playing poker. People are looking to take you down That's if you right. give them an opportunity. So the only so so I'm not saying that you can't be taken down by the media. I'm not saying any of that. But th- th- what fascinates me more is the people that haven't been taken down that have had those ups and downs that have been Affleck have had. Mm-hmm. Look at um, what's his name, Joey from Friends. Whoa. What's his name? Oh, no, that's the wrong Joey. I was thinking Joey from Blossom. I got Blossom on the mind. That was Joey Lawrence. We are talking about Matt LeBlanc. Sorry, right. it took me a second to grab it out of my brain. Not Joey, the other guy. Um, uh, from Friends? Yeah. Are we talking about... Uh, yes. Oh, God, why am I... Free? Why Matthew Matt, Perry. Matthew Perry. Right. He's been up and down and all around, and he's had drug problems, all kinds of problems. I don't see anybody going to rip his face off because he's staying really low, down, and quiet. Yeah. So I think it's a little bit of both. Okay, I think that's uh, that, that's fair enough, and it is uh, it is amazing how John Travolta was able to come through that period where he was having a lot of allegations thrown at him by not saying anything, and the media really did want to destroy everything that he was about at that time. And what happened? Yeah, he, and they may still do it, but so far, he's done something, you know, that has allowed it to have balance. Now, what really fascinates me, okay. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say two names, and you tell me the difference. All right. I want you to hold on to those two names. Hold on. All right. I'm He's hold holding on, on because uh, we need to go. We need to take a quick commercial break because we've got some awesome sponsors that we want you to, to support. We'll be right back after this. Hospitality professionals rely on HD supply facilities and maintenance for the day-to-day maintenance of their engineering departments, housekeeping supplies, as well as their capital expenditure renovations. And why? Because they're reliable and they've been around for decades. They have over 100,000 products and they have a nationwide distribution system. They have an amazing dedicated sales representation force and... They have the tools, technology, and specialized services to make your hotel spectacular. All right. Thank you so much, sponsors. Really appreciate everything that you're doing for us, eh? Right? All right, Anthony. Throw it out right now. What are your, two names. Uh, what are your two names? Alex Rodriguez, Pete Rose. Right. I don't understand why Pete Rose has been vilified for so many decades. Now, as a Med fan, I remember that incident with uh, Buddy Harrelson in the early 70s. It was just people competition. Still are, people still I love, aren't up, right? I love Buddy Harrelson. Everybody loved Boo. I think they just love booing Pete I Rose. I love Buddy right. Harrelson. So yeah, I, but they were at Shea Stadium when he did it. I know, right. I think that's just uh, all in good fun, all in good and, sport. And basically what he's talking about is Buddy Harrelson was the shortstop for... The New York Mets. The New York Mets. And Pete Rose, everybody knows they call him Charlie Hustle because the man just runs. Even when he walks to first base, he runs down first base line. So he basically ran into, uh, he slid into Bud Harrelson. Bud Harrelson said something. Pete Rose picked up Bud Harrelson, who's about 37 pounds, and crushed him. Right. And people were like, that's horrible, that's terrible. I'm not talking about that. That's competition. No, I know. He was wrong for doing it. I'm just kind of playing but, with the that. But the man, Pete Rose bet on baseball. And he apparently bet on baseball, allegedly, through... Uh, in the dugout, and he yeah. bet on his own team. Right. Okay. And th- that is in baseball or in sports, the the holy grail. Okay. But he bet you for his team. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So he made a huge mistake. He bet on baseball. Better be better for your own betting for your team than against, against your, your team. team. So he's betting for his team, and he's been vilified, and he's not allowed to be in the Hall of Fame. Now, if right. anybody deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, it's Pete Rose because he's the all time uh, hit leader now, and he played the baseball the right way. So he's been vilified, he's been ostracized, and he's making his living basically signing baseballs. Right, and if you, um, for the longest time, he was at a, a, a sports collectible shop at Mandalay Bay, and I always found it to be the uh, the saddest thing. Every time I walked through the shops but connecting Mandalay Bay and Luxor, he'd be sitting there in the store all alone, hoping to sell to, to sell some autographs. Oh, and, and it well, was are you serious? Heartbreaking to me. How long goes that? All the time Still? for like the last 10 years. I think that store closed about a year ago because when I was serious? there last May, he wasn't there. But until then, I every single time I'd been at Mandalay Bay, I am shocked. It shocked. And it was, you would think that he would have a line out the door for him, but being there all the time, I guess he just became a, a fixture and spent a lot of time there on his own. It was that's it, horrible. Very sad to me um, that that's what had happened to him. Um, hopefully, he's got some good investments and he's able to, you know, to have and a nice he, and lifestyle. He is announcing sports again. And, good. But but now let's talk about 
Lance Alex Armstrong. Alex Rodriguez. Oh, Alex Rodriguez. I was thinking Lance Armstrong. So, so the reason second. I bring this up is because we're talking about in your career, the ups and downs um, of, you know, when you're up, everybody loves you. And when you're down, everybody hates you. And we're using um, Alex Rodriguez mm-hmm. and Pete Rose as how does someone go so high and so low? Mm-hmm. And why do we like seeing that? Right. Is that what we're talking about? I think that's, I think that's what we're, we're talking about. I right. think we're, t- we're trying to talk about a lot of good things, but there is some sort of spectacle about society that loves to watch building people up, but we also love a great so, train wreck. So now Alex Rodriguez yeah. used steroids, lied about it, cheated about it, vilified the New York Yankees, tried to sue the New York Yankees. Uh, everybody in New York hated him. He was in the front page, back page, center page of New York. He did all kinds of bad things. And now he's the gold standard. What the hell? How did that happen? So why do you think that happened? Did uh, society move or was, is he just such a lovable guy that we wanted to re-embrace him? What was it about his set of circumstances that made people want to rally behind him again? I think one reason Pete Rose isn't tall, dark, and handsome, Alex Rodriguez is. Um, I think Alex Rodriguez showed up as like a businessman. Alex Rodriguez said he was sorry. Alex Rodriguez, I think, which is really critical, got the Steinbrenners back on his side, and he's in the good graces of the Steinbrenners. I think that was critically important, and I think people subconsciously say, how the hell that happened? Because we know if George Steinbrenner was still alive, that wouldn't happen. Right. But his sons, or daughter, and everybody, they brought him back into the fold. And I think once you have somebody you vilified saying, okay, he made a mistake, he's back in our organization, uh, and he, he's not a bad guy. Then he did a reality show on help, helping other athletes, right. and that showed the human side to him. Uh, doesn't hurt that his girlfriend is J, uh, J-Lo, um, and he just looks like uh, now he's got a sports show on Sunday night. He does Sunday night baseball. So he has either had the best PR team in the history of mankind, or we just have a really short memory. We have a really short memory. And I, I think, think he has that, a PR company that's the greatest uh, of all time. And I think we have a really short memory in this. Then why society. is Pete Rose being vilified? I, I think that that's a particular set of circumstances. I, and I, there's going to be exceptions to every single rule I'll tell out you there. Why. Yeah, tell me why. Okay. What's the difference between... Because it just came to me. I would say the apology for Thank one. you. Pete yeah. Rose never truly said i am sorry right alex rodriguez said i'm sorry i was wrong w- during that period i was a moron i was an idiot i was wrong they were right thank jesus christ that they are allowing me to play ba- to be involved right. in baseball that's right Th- thank everything that is holy that i am allowed to make a living for my children I think that's why. All right. So I, I think also in society, we do like when people apologize and we want to sincerely, be, apologize. sincerely apologize. We want them to be uh, redeemed. Right. I can't stand those apologies where it's like, I'm sorry if you were offended. Right. Because that to me is not a real apology. Um, a real apology is all about acknowledging what you did wrong sharing how you did it wrong and why you will never do it again. And I find that uh, one of the things that we're losing is the art of a great apology as well in, in our world. Well, I think apology lets you take back control. Mm-hmm. Um, I was in a um, meeting once with the director of sales and marketing. I thought she was wrong. I thought I was right. Everybody's looking at us. We're very intense. She's raising her voice. I might have raised my voice. But what was good is She's allowed, like, she's yelling at me. Right. Like, a lot of people wouldn't allow your director of sales to yell at you. Mm-hmm. I allowed it yeah. because I like that, mm-hmm. right? I, like, usually Joe Maz would just shut it down and walk out and say, don't you dare yell at me, you're right. fired. Uh-huh. I enjoyed it. I realized that she was right, I was wrong in the middle of the conversation. I said, you're right, I'm wrong, I'm sorry, let's move on. And she looked at me like I was an idiot. She goes, you're trying to make a fool of me. I said, no, that last statement you said, you were right, I was wrong, and I'm sorry. And it took, it took her energy and it took her leverage, and she didn't like that at first. And then she realized and, and she, she appreciated it. And it taught everybody in the room that if you're wrong, just say you're wrong. And it gave me my power back because it was like she's like yelling at me and I lost all my power. As soon as I said, I'm sorry, I got my power back. And I said it sincerely. So why do you think it's hard for people to come to that moment where they apologize? Vulnerability, vulnerability. and insecurity. But 
we know rationally that Americans love that. People love that. And You're if you could open yourself up and make that apology, people are going to like you more. Yet, for some reason, we feel that it shows that you're too vulnerable, as you were saying, and people aren't going to like it. It's like anything else. Jumping out of an airplane, getting on an airplane, driving the car. If you're nervous or if you're a stressed person, it's like anything else. If you're insecure and you're not feeling comfortable in your own skin and you say you're sorry, people are going to think you're weak. Because you're a nervous person, you're an insecure person, you're 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 scared. Um, I feel energetic after I realize I screwed up and I said I'm sorry. Um, I don't feel nervous by it. I feel energetic, empowered by it. But just because somebody else views that as a positive thing, that people should apologize and if you show vulnerability. We will, we will forgive you, that doesn't negate the fact that I still feel unsure about myself and that you're going to make fun of me. That is such an important issue that each and every one of us have because we all, I think, part of this human experience is if we go ahead and we reveal the inner sanctum of our personality, it may get rejected and therefore it'll make us feel like we're bad people because society has decided that whatever it, we're being vulnerable about is just the wrong thing. The qual vulnerability, the quality or state of being exposed to the possibility of being attacked right. or harmed either physically or emotionally. Right. Yeah. So no matter how strong of a person you are, if you're feeling vulnerable, you know, so, so I don't think just because people say, oh, they, they, should, they should say they're sorry. If you're not feeling strong enough to say you're sorry, you can't say you're sorry. You know, Pete Rose maybe is a very vulnerable person and could never admit to himself that he was wrong and really offer sincere apology that everybody believed. Alex Rodriguez, when he apologized, even though I don't know if I'm okay with it, um, I, I felt like, hey, that was a pretty good apology, bro. I mean, like, he seems sincere on that. Now... Should Pete Rose be in the Hall of Fame? 100%. I believe that. If Alex Rodriguez get into the Hall of Fame, then every single person that ever did steroids has right. to be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. And, and are we ready to have all these asterisks taken away from people's names that are in the Hall of Fame? Or put asterisks on people's names that go in the Hall of Fame? Well, I don't know. I think that you're... That's a different subject. Uh, yeah, but. I think if we're looking at the Pete Rose versus the steroid issue, I see them as... Yeah, they seem to be the same, but I think they're two separate issues because here we're talking about a guy that gambled for his team to win, which is very different than and not as bad than fundamentally changing your body to have an advantage over the other players and playing outside the rules. So, right, and even if you, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, it, it's all right. Continue. Even if you say it justified yourself, well, everybody else was using, so I'm going to use you, so I don't lose my competitive right. advantage that's just justifying a you know you know there's no right way to do a wrong thing right so there's no right way to, to justify that so he was wrong right right and people will make that argument all day long but everybody was doing it. who gives a shit if everybody else is robbing the bank you're gonna rob a bank as my mother would say so it's two different things he basically committed a policy violation that gave him a competitive advantage. So all of his numbers should be looked at with an asterisk and right. like, oh, Pete Rose made a mistake. If he came out and was vulnerable enough to say, what an asshole. Yeah. Okay, I think, and plus he went after, who's the gentleman, the commissioner of baseball? Bud Selig? No, the guy before him. Oh, God. Uh, with a G. He died of a heart oh, attack. Oh, sh 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 uh, I'm going to have to look that Vince, one up. Vince Giam Giamatti. Gi Giamatti. No. Uh, Vince Giamatti. Was it? Well, it was the guy before him. Yeah. And anyway, he got into it with with Pete Rose and because Pete Rose really never came out and said he was sorry, and then he passed away. It is Giamatti. Right, Giamatti. And then he passed away. So it's like they couldn't ever get to a Bartlett an Giamatti. <laughs> and, they, and they could never get to an inroad. They could never get to a... You know, they right. could never... They could never settle it, and the man. I think if you, if he became, if he was allowed to be in the Hall of Fame today, he would fill out. He would be able to fill up a ninety thousand seat stadium with yeah. people giving him a standing ovation. Yeah, yeah, he was beloved as a player. Yeah, I mean, there's no greater player as far as hustle, and if my 
if I had a child and I said, this person used steroids, Pete Rose bet on his team to win, which story would I accept mm -hmm. to tell my child? Right. It's like, hey, he was so competitive and he believed in his team so much that he bet on it. It was wrong, but man, that's how much he be believed in his passion and his team. This guy took drugs to basically win and he's winning the wrong way. Right. Yeah, and we have a history of vilifying people that take drugs to win the wrong way. And Pete Rose didn't get any games taken away from his team right. for winning. For winning, Not one game got taken away right. because he won it or lost it. There he goes touching his breast again. And But um, Alex Rodriguez, uh, I'm sorry, Al yeah, Alex Rodriguez, if he's taking steroids, he could potentially won a lot of games that should be taken away. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think the Pete Rose comparison shouldn't be made against A Rod. It should be made against the uh, the Chicago Black Sox from the 1920s, right? Because Rich the was. Black Sox bet to lose the World Series and through the World Series, which is an egregious act in the world of be sports. It's like being a traitor, and right. But Pete Rose is saying, "I've got an addiction." But at the same time, go our team. We're so great. I'm going to put my money behind it. And that's another word you just used, addiction. Mm -hmm. If somebody was an alcoholic, I think C.C. Sebastian came out and said, is it C.C. Sebastian? I'm not sure. That he, was, that he was drinking too much. Right. And they got him help. I, I, I don't want to use his name, so I'm going to yeah. retract that. I don't know. He was a pitcher on the Yankees. He was using uh, alcohol, and they got him help because he had an addiction. So he should, he should, should he be banned? Agreed. And especially since in the last decade in particular, our understanding of addiction and society's um, recognition that sometimes these things happen and then we could forgive them. It's interesting that he still, Pete Rose, has not been forgiven. I didn't really expect this to turn into a uh, Pete Rose uh, podcast. We like, no, to, keep, we we like to keep but, it timely But let's get here. back to why, why we're talking about that. Yeah. The whole idea of uh, you know building up celebrity and bringing them down. I'm curious as to what all of you folks think out in the audience. Do you think we have a uh, predilection for um, pulling down celebrities because they've gotten too big for their britches? Or how do you all see it? Make sure you drop a line. Let us know. We've got our great Facebook page. We've got our great LinkedIn page. We're on uh, Instagram. I'm at Traveling Glenn. He's at Anthony Hotels. Just let us let us know. So um, what else do you think? So CC Sebastian yeah. was the person that came out and said he was an alcoholic. Okay. He needed help. And he, he again, we built CC Sebastian to be one of the best pitchers on the Yankees. But when he admitted his problem, got help for his problem, he went right back to that pitching pedestal. Right. And now we're just judging him on his pitching. No one vilified him because he admitted he got help for it, right? Mm -hmm. It's when, like... It's when people are trying to hide it. Right. Yeah. All right. Makes a, it makes a lot of sense. Anything else on this particular issue that you want to talk well, about? Well, I don't think we, did we solve the world's problems. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think we're definitely, definitely solved everything. So I think what I take away from this is people understand people are fallible, that people make bad judgments, and people screw up. We, everybody does, and we have people in our family we can use examples for. We can use ourselves examples. And I think the quicker you, you forgive yourself and then you're allowed to apologize because you forgave yourself, the quicker other people will right. forgive you. And I think that's why Alex Rodriguez kept on going up and Pete Rose keeps on going down. Right. It's definitely an issue of how uh, you, know, you comport yourself when you're in these particular situations. Are you going to face the facts and deal with it and be honest with your, yourself? I think that's the hardest thing to do in, in, in this world when you've done something really bad or screwed up in a significant way. Being honest with yourself. Because you're admitting, vulnerable. Yeah. Because you're going to be criticized. Right. And we all are going to be criticized. I think about like Gosh, I used to be, you know, I first got married, it would be about winning an argument and not necessarily being honest with yourself. Now, I'm much more willing to say, you know what, honey, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have done X, Y, Z. I'm sorry. I'll try better next time. But and it's done a, it's done a lot of wonders for all of my uh, my personal relationships is to just be able to acknowledge when we make a mistake and move on not double down on you know digging your heels in unless unless mistake. you truly believe in it and i always say that um i'm rarely ever wrong right right and people look at me when i say that and they're like oh you're full of shit i'm like no because i'm rarely ever right right 
Okay, so 99% of the time when I say something and someone says I'm wrong, I'm probably wrong. Even in business or whatever, I'm like, all right, let me look at that and I'll say I'm sorry, no problem. 99% of the time, I could be wrong, whatever. But the 1% that I truly believe I'm right, I will, I will dig in deeper and harder than anyone in the world because I thought about all of the ways I could be wrong and I've determined that I'm right, but I right. barely ever feel that well, way because I, I, there's always somebody, I always appreciate somebody else's perspective. As you should, Anthony. If you are right, then you need to be right and you need to make the world see that you're absolutely right. But it's really more of an issue of acknowledging to yourself if you're wrong. If you're right, Absolutely, you're right. But if you're out there projecting that you're right, but you have that little voice inside your head saying you're not right, you've got to listen to that little voice. Well, hopefully, we solved the world's problems. I think I definitely think uh, I think we did, and this has been uh, this has been a this has been a terrific, interesting thing. I I really thought we were going to talk more about celebrity. Somehow, we wound up talking about vulnerability and being honest with yourself. We're talking about Alex Rodriguez and Pete Rose. Yeah, we just spoke about them a lot. But I, I think what I'm going to take away from this podcast, Anthony, is really trying to be honest again, with yourself. Um, When you hear that little voice inside you, that moral compass that you have within you, um, listening to it and allowing yourself to realize that that inner voice is traditionally right and what's ever going out externally has more of a chance to be wrong. So now we come to the part of the podcast where I have to say, tell me something I don't know. This is going to be a this is a this is a tough one for me because I'm not really I was I was really just thinking about this vulnerability uh, issue so much. So I'll tell you something uh, you don't know uh, in regards to vulnerability. I think that when I was a kid, I would be much quicker to anger. I would be much more black and white about issues in life. I would be, I would take a position and I would hold it steadfast like it was the only thing that mattered because it meant winning that argument. But over time, I realized that there is very few instances in life that are just black or white. It's a world filled with grays and we have to find our ways to negotiate our way through those gray zones in order for us all to get along, in order for us all to find that sense of achievement and for all of us to ultimately find happiness. That's something you don't know. Okay. So Anthony, I got to ask you, tell me something that I don't know about you. So I can stay on vulnerability, but I don't want to. All right, good. We're talking enough about vulnerability, I think. Uh, When I was 13 years old, my first job was uh, working at Dunkin' Donuts in Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn. Nice. I like that. I like how uh, you you kept that one short. Usually you're the one with these to to go on. Um, uh, My first food service job was at Wendy's. That's a little bonus, something you didn't know. That's a bonus. Yeah. I started off, and uh, I'm pretty proud of myself, Anthony, because I started off as Fry Guy, but worked my way up to drive through Chef. Wow. Fry Guy. Yeah, baby. I could flip those burgers like no tomorrow. That was really creepy. Yeah, I know. (laughs) Okay, so where can we find you? Perfect place to leave it. You can find me at Traveling Glenn. Be sure to uh, check out the No Vacancy podcast in addition to this one. That comes out every Friday. Of course, we're coming at you two times every single week. Like us on iTunes. Love those five-star ratings. Nothing better than being able to tell my mom I got a five-star rating on iTunes. All right, she doesn't understand that, but between us, it feels good anyway. And but I appreciate your comments. Like I like when I run hotels, I don't like telling people, "Hey, go on TripAdvisor and write some good things." I I I want your good comments. Um, but if you don't think we're doing a good job, I'd like you to DM us before you blow us up uh, and be critical of us. But if you feel that we're just full of crap, say that too. Um, I think it's important to be uh, be authentic. So, um, and also, you have to go to our Instagram page. It is the best, most dynamic Instagram page out there. I'm sure one of these days we'll actually have a post on it too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I guess I'll see you later. All right, all right guys, thanks for listening. And uh, for Anthony and myself, Glenn, thanks for checking in. It's checking in with Anthony and Glenn. Teaching you to be the hotel you're that you wanna be. It's checking in with Anthony and Glenn.